Hi everyone. I am today talking to one of my friends who is out in Beijing, China. Uh, she was covering as a journalist the Winter Olympics, and in a couple of days, she will be covering the Paralympics. Her name is Jill, and she has a podcast called "Keep the Flame Alive," which is an Olympic and Paralympic podcast. And during the Olympics and the Paralympics, she and her friend Allison do daily podcasts covering all of the sports that they are covering at the Olympics and the Paralympics. So I wanted to bring her over and talk to her a little bit about her experience. So hi, Jill. Hello. Thank you for joining me all the way from Beijing, China. That's so cool. It's almost hard to believe I'm here, to be quite honest. Even though I've been here for an entire month so far. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit about the work that you did during the Olympics a couple weeks ago? So what I wanted to do was to see as much of the Olympics as I could. And because we're a podcast for fans, tell the fans what it's like to be there. Because there, there are some spectators here, but they're only Chinese spectators, and it's it's really hard to understand what the games feel like. So my job is really to express that to other people and let them know what are they, what don't they see on TV, and can kind, of, kind of confirm what they do see on TV. And what kind of events were you able to to see while you were there? Because you got to go into a lot of the venues and see a lot of the athletes in person. Oh, I saw so many events. It was so much fun. I saw uh, biathlon, which is cross country skiing and shooting, and I saw、um, moguls skiing,、uh, figure skating. I saw a lot of figure skating, and、uh, I saw speed skating and short track speed skating, and.、Uh, The、curling. I saw a lot of curling too. I saw men's hockey and women's hockey, and I saw big air, which is amazing to watch in person.、Uh, which one was your favorite out of all of them? Oh wow! I I love biathlon, but that venue was very very cold, so it was really hard to enjoy it sometimes. <laughs> Even though it was really cool to see athletes I follow on a regular basis. Um, I enjoyed the figure skating, and some of it was some of it was more enjoyable than others because there was a lot of news about the figure skating competition this time around this Olympics, and that that was very tough to to watch unfold that in the action that happened. And、um, I, I did love big air. Big air is just a really cool sport to see in person, and and I also really loved、uh, speed skating. Short track made me happy. It's a really exciting sport to watch, and、uh, the long track. I got to see somebody we interviewed for the podcast win a gold medal, and that is just an incredible feeling. Who did you get to interview that got a gold medal?、Uh, her name was Erin Jackson, and she did the 500 meter. And it's kind of amazing that athletes train four years for the chance to to race a race that is. Less than a minute long, and I think her race was actually less than forty seconds. Can you explain a little bit about Big Air、um, for those people that might not know what that means? Okay, so it is a、uh, Big Air means you try to get as much air on a jump as possible. So there's Big Air for skiing, and there's Big Air for snowboard. And these、uh, athletes go down this giant hill. This is kind of a manufactured hill. It looks a little like a ski jump. But at the end, there's a huge ramp that propels you upward, and you do all these flips in the air, and you try to land it. <laughs> and it's just—it's really cool to see someone go like nine or ten meters in the air, which I, I don't know how that translates to feet, but it's really high, and then land a jump. It's incredible. And you got to actually go to the bigger venue and see this giant hill.、Um, yes. That is.、Uh, did you get to go up to the top, or were you only on the bottom? I was only on the bottom. That the the top was just for the athletes and coaches. And so, if somebody、uh, would want to watch this in the Paralympics, would they be able to? Do they have big air in the Paralympics? Sadly, no. They don't have big air in the Paralympics. The Paralympics is actually pretty small compared to the Winter Olympics. There's only six sports for Paralympics. There's sled hockey. Curling,、um, snowboard, 
alpine skiing, cross country, and biathlon. And which one are you most excited to watch in person? <sighs> that is really hard to make a choice because we interviewed a wheelchair curler, so I'm really excited to watch him compete. Sled hockey looks really exciting as a game to watch, and it's really action packed. And uh, the athletes bang into each other a lot. So I kind of like the demolition derby aspect of it. But uh, so I'm excited about that. I'm, I love biathlon. So I want to see biathlon again. There's a biathlete for the US. There's two biathletes for the US. One is Kendall Gretsch and the other is Oksana Masters. And they are incredible athletes who not only compete in the Winter Olympics, they competed in the Summer Olympics at Tokyo as well and won medals there. So now they they switch sports and go to their other sports for the other half of the year and they'll be here at the olympics again so that'll be really interesting to see how they do and and how they manage all that training that they've had to do over the last years and the paralympics for the summer were only six months ago right and so they had to switch their training super fast that is correct and i had heard Oksana Masters say that she was a cyclist in the Olympics and she has to use a hand cycle. So she uses her hands to pedal the bike. And the for biathlon, which is what she do, does here for the cross country skiing part, it's a totally different motion than the bike. The bike she has to push and with uh, the skiing, she has to pull herself. So it uses totally different muscles in her arms and she had to like redevelop those again. And why are there two different events, the Olympics and the Paralympics? What's what's the big difference between the two? Uh, the Paralympics is for athletes with disabilities. So they may be missing uh, a limb, an arm or a leg. They could be, um, so for the Summer Olympics, there's an intellectual disabilities category. Sometimes they have uh, neuro neurological problems, stuff, problems with their brain where it does affects their nervous system and they can't move as effectively as an able-bodied athlete. So it just gives them a chance to compete at the highest level and on a more even playing field for them to achieve their best. You mentioned that you interviewed one of the wheelchair curlers. Can you let us know who that is so that we can watch out for that person? Sure, he is on Team USA and his name is Steve Empt. Steve. And curling, yeah, curling is a, uh, a team sport. So they have teams of four work together to play the game. And what has your experience been like in China? Have you eaten any good food? I've eaten some excellent food. We have a lot of um, steamed buns, which I really like. We have a lot of dumplings, which I really like. Um, I have this peach beverage, which I really enjoy. That's today's beverage. Um, we have in the dining hall here in the media center where I have a workspace, they have robots cooking a lot of the food. So it's really fresh and it's fun to see the robots at work doing their thing. And <laughs> you get, it's, it's a lot of Chinese food. They have some Western food here, but it's more fun to try the Chinese food while I'm in China. And I, I follow you on uh, social media and you always are posting your breakfast and your breakfast spreads are incredible. Oh. The breakfast at the hotel, the hotel gives you breakfast as well with your room. And they have these amazing buffets that have steamed buns. They have all kinds of like oatmeals and porridges. They have eggs two or three different ways. They have bacon and sausage and potatoes and spaghetti and broccoli and all these other things that you wouldn't have for breakfast, including a, sal a full salad bar <laughs> and, and fruit. And uh, the hotel I'm at now has a bunch of smoked fish as well. So it's just incredible the, the variety of food we have. And it's interesting to see what other countries think is breakfast food, because I would not put spaghetti as breakfast food, but I might try it. I also eat, uh, they also have steamed pumpkin a lot. And that's a really interesting food to have for breakfast too. I don't think any of our students have had steamed pumpkin. It does it does it taste good? <laughs> yeah, it does taste good. I would recommend. Um, have you? I know you've been on lots of buses and trains as you've been going along, so you haven't been able to see a lot of the sites. But is there any 
area in Beijing or around Beijing um, that if you ever came back to China, you would want to visit in person that you've seen from a distance maybe? Um, I have seen the Great Wall from a distance. The Great Wall of China would be really cool to see. It's one of China's biggest uh, monuments or it's a huge wall, but it's one of the things that they're most known for. And in some of the venues, you could see it off in the distance in the hills and it, at night it lights up and it's really cool. It would be nice to see that. Um, it would ni be nice to see the forbidden city and palaces that are in the center of Beijing and uh, Tiananmen Square, and which is a very important square to the people here. So it, it would be nice to see that as well. Well, thank you so much, Jill, for uh, meeting with me uh, today. I know it's uh, about 9.30 at night for you. It is 8.30 <laughs> in the morning for me. So hopefully you had a good Monday. I did have a good Monday. Monday, <laughs> this Monday has been good. Well, I hope that a lot of our students will be able to watch the Paralympics either on NBC or I think USA Network will probably have some stuff. Or if you okay. have uh, streaming apps, you can watch it on Peacock. And maybe if they show where the press is, maybe you'll see Jill and her friend Allison in the crowd. Um, so Jill, wonderful to see you. Uh, thank you so much for talking with us. Thanks so much for having me.